Today we're going to look at the spring wreath decal that was used by Homer Laughlin in the 1940s and 1950s. We have several shapes to look at, Liberty, Virginia Rose, Kitchen Craft, and Republic. It originated on Georgian eggshell, but Georgian eggshell examples are rather difficult to find. Its first use was treatment G3303 with gold edge line and then again G3318 with ivory shoulder. So we'll start by looking at a piece of Liberty. There's the decal, a rather stylized floral treatment. On Liberty there's no gold edge and it's treatment L603. Georgian eggshell was introduced in around 1940 so this decal is limited to the 40s and early 1950s. And this piece was marked 1948. Virginia Rose. There's your Virginia Rose embossing. A spring wreath decal. This is treatment CAC 186 with gold edge. That's smudged. I believe it says 1946. Not that difficult to find on Liberty or Virginia Rose. On Republic, it's rather common. Treatment R2534. There's a creamer from 1949. Sauce boat. From 1948, sugar. This is the smaller of the two sizes of Republic sugars. 1949, the teapot. 1949, and a covered casserole. from 1948. When I did a video on Republic, I talked about how it was introduced in the teens and 20s and how it had all these gold stamp decorations and then in the 30s it, it just sort of dies out and then it has this resurgence in the 40s and 50s mainly because of the use of the Priscilla decals on Republic. Well spring wreath is part of that resurgence and so it's rather common. Then we have Kitchen Craft, KK343, with gold edge. As a matter of fact, every time I see Spring Wreath and it has an edge line, it's always gold. It's not platinum. There's the original sticker. That's the medium covered jar. There's the large covered jar. We'll come back to that in a moment. An underplate. I don't know if I've ever shown one of these before. This is the kitchen craft underplate that goes underneath a regular casserole. And this is the 9 inch version. There's also a 6 inch version. There's the back stamp. It doesn't come from any particular line of dinnerware. It's not a pickup piece. It was made specifically for kitchen craft. Salt and pepper shakers, again with that gold edge. Pie plate with an embossed oven serve cake lifter. So we'll look at a couple documents. This one's an order form for J.C. Penney. It's dated June 4th, 1941. And it's for store number 1411 out of Greenville, South Carolina. And it's for sets of mixing bowls with spring wreath. There's no treatment number listed here. There's no pattern number. It's just simply three, or I'm sorry, two dozen of three-piece decorated mixing bowl sets for $8.04 per dozen. So they were ordering this for this particular store, again, 1941. From newspapers.com, an ad for J.C. Penney's and we see the mixing bowl set again. This is dated January 1st, 1945. And by the way, there's some pieces of Fiesta here. The juice set, 98 cents, 
And the unlisted salad nappy with the spoon and fork, again 98 cents. Special promotion still going on in 1945. And this comes from an Alden's catalog from 1952. There are several Homer Lachlan lines here. We've got this one up top. They're calling it Apple Blossom, though. You rec probably recognize that as Dogwood. There's a Rosalind on Nautilus Ivory. Enchantment, which is more commonly known as Apple Blossom on Eggshell Nautilus. Tulip Time on Georgian Eggshell. And then here we have the only name I've ever really seen for this pattern, Spring Flower. So Spring Wreath is a collector name. In fact, Richard Ratcher used it in his Virginia Rose book, though here in this Alden's catalog it's Spring Flower, and that's the Republic shape. Again, treatment R2534. So I want to go back to this large covered jar and look at its marking because it has an impressed mold mark that says Fiesta Kitchen Craft. And this is not terribly uncommon to see a Fiesta mold used in Kitchen Craft, uh, decaled Kitchen Craft, or decorated otherwise with hand-painted work. Um, that does not make it Fiesta. They're just using either extra pieces, or there might be a flaw in it that they didn't want to use it with the solid color glazes, so they used a cow. It could be an overrun, whatever the case may be. Um, it is not a piece of Fiesta. It doesn't necessarily make it more valuable than if it was marked with the plain old Kitchen Craft back stamp, like this one. But it is something that's out there. Um, here's another one with the Wild Rose treatment. I actually did a video on this particular pattern, and if we look at its marking, again we see Fiesta Kitchen Craft. For me, that doesn't make a difference. You may feel differently, and that's okay, but uh, they are out there. And here's another set. This is a stack set with hand-painted work. And each of these units has the Fiesta marking. And by the way, this is the oven serve glaze. This is not Fiesta Old Ivory. There's your hand-painted tulip, apple and pear. Unfortunately, they did not get it too dark on the apple and pear to match the rest of it. Another tulip at the bottom. Rather unusual pattern. I've seen this in some advertisements. Um, it's not named, however, but it was something they were working on at the same time they were doing peasant wear with the hand-painted design on the tan craft shape. So this comes from around 1940. And this one has a special back stamp. Hand-painted Homer Lachlan Made in USA. I purchased two of these several years ago uh, from Bob Cockrell, a collector from uh, Indiana. So again, if you see that Fiesta mold marking on Kitchen Craft, it Really, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't make it super rare or anything, um, but it is something to watch for. So that's it for Spring Wreath by Homer Lachlan.